OK, we're going to take a few minutes to work through the basic analysis of an import tariff diagram. It's one of those diagrams that you're using, using all the time whenever you get a question on protectionism, um, policies to correct for a trade deficit, that kind of stuff. So an import tariff uh, is basically a tax imposed on a product when it's imported into a country. It's a form of protectionism. Uh, basically, the aim of a tariff is to protect domestic suppliers, domestic businesses from external competition. And a tariff does that by increasing the price of imports to reduce the competitiveness in price terms of the imported goods and services. Therefore, hopefully, if the tariff is effective, a greater percentage or proportion of domestic spending will come from domestic suppliers uh, for emerging countries, lower middle in income countries, tariffs can also be a useful increment to their tax revenues. And it's also a potential way if you can cut the spending on imports of improving your balance of payments. So let's look at how a tariff actually works in terms of an analysis diagram. We're going to work through stage by stage the, the analysis of an import tariff. Let's take the market for steel. Uh, there's a supply of steel, domestic supply from sort of home-based steel producers. There's a domestic demand from consumers, people who might be using steel, for example, in car making, in construction, and other derived demands. P1, Q1 is the domestic equilibrium price if there wasn't any trade. Now let's assume that the world supply of steel uh, can come into the market at a cheaper price. Uh, that's prices PW. And uh, this, is, this basically tells us that maybe other countries can produce steel more cheaply. In other words, if their unit costs are lower, they have a, a comparative advantage in producing steel. If that is the world price, and assuming that domestic suppliers effectively are price takers in the market, then steel will be traded at the world price, PW, and at PW, domestic suppliers can produce output Q2. However, at this world price, consumers, well, they'd like to get hold of the steel at that cheap price, so domestic demand expands to Q3. Notice here that Q3 is higher than domestic supply Q2, so this gap Q2 to Q3 is made up by importing steel at the world price PW. All of this is before we've imposed an import tariff. Now let's assume the government introduces an import tariff that increases the price from PW to PW plus T. Okay, so effectively the world supply curve is shifted up by the amount of the tariff, the vertical distance. Well, two things happen. First of all, at the higher price, domestic steel producers are better able to uh, make manufacture steel and make a sufficient profit. So the higher price makes their businesses more commercially viable. So domestic supply expands uh, to Q5. But consumers, having originally got their steel very cheaply, now have to pay a higher price for steel. So therefore, they, their demand will contract to Q4. Domestic supply expands to Q5. Domestic demand contracts to Q4. The net result is that the quantity or the volume of imports decreases to the distance Q5, Q4. So the tariff has reduced the quantity of imports. Let me just play the animation one more time. There's the situation before the tariff. We introduce a tariff to raise the price. Domestic supply increases, domestic demand decreases, the quantity of imports contracts. Now, that quantity of imports, of course, will be taxed. And the yellow area here shows the government's tax revenue from the tariff. That equals the tariff per unit, whatever it is, $100, $200 per unit, multiplied by the quantity of imports, which in this case is Q5 to Q4. Now, that's the basic analysis diagram for a tariff. We're going to extend it in another video by looking at the welfare consequences. And I'll also, of course, have a separate video evaluating the effects of a tariff. But for now, that's the basic analysis.